In this video, we are going to solve inequalities involving power functions, particularly those with rational exponents. Now, the way to solve an inequality, it doesn't matter what function is in play, you can first solve the corresponding equation. So we want to take 5 times x minus 2 to the 3 halves power and set that equal to 135 and solve for it. To begin, I would divide both sides by 5. We then get x minus 2 raised to the 3 halves power. And that's then going to equal, well, 5 goes in 135 27 times. And so next, we're going to take the 2 thirds power of both sides. The 2 thirds power. On the left hand side, we're just going to get x minus 2. On the right hand side, we're going to get the cube root of 27 squared, which the cube root of 27 is a 3, and 3 squared is equal to 9. We then add 2 to both sides, and we see that our marker is going to be x equals 11. And so this is the this is the x axis we now want to consider. So we have our marker at 11. So either this entire interval, which would be 11 to infinity, is part of the solution or it's not. And then the other one, negative ele negative infinity to 11, either that's part of all, that's part of everything or not. In which case we could plug these into the inequalities if you want to. We can also try to think of it in terms of graphing these things. What's going on here? So if we try to graph the function y equals 5 times x minus 2 to the 3 halves minus 135. So I just set the right hand side equal to 0. You subtract 135 from both sides. If we think about it in terms of transformations, what's going on here? We have our standard function y equals x to the 3 halves. So this is like a square root function that's been distorted. So graphically, it would look something like the following, just roughly speaking. Um, in terms of transformations, we've vertically stretched it by a factor of 5. Great. Uh, then we shifted it to the right by 2. That's great. And then we shifted it down by 135. In particular, because of these shifts, the right-hand side of the graph should be positive, and the left-hand side of the graph is going to be negative. And again, you could just plug in a test value. You could plug in something like x equals 0, what happens there. Um, plug in x equals 2,000, see what happens there. Test points are ex acceptable as well. So what I predict is the following. This should be above the x-axis, and this should be below. And I should make an amendment to what I said before. I wouldn't go down to negative infinity. Um, the domain here is as far as down as we could go would be, it looks like, 2. Uh, because if we take something less than 2, x equals 2 right here, you're going to get a negative number and negative to a square root is going to be imaginary. So it actually would go, the two possibilities were less than 11, which is 2 to 11, and greater than 11, which is 11 to infinity. And the graph suggests that it's going to be positive here. And so our function would then be, we want all things that are greater than 11. Because our inequality is greater than or equal to, our solution would include the marker 11 towards infinity. And again, if you don't like this graphical approach, just plug in a specific number here. I would plug in something for which I expect to get a perfect square. Like, for example, if I take the number 6, take x equals 6, for example, you would end up with 5 times 6 minus 2 to the 3 halves. That gives us 5 times 4 to the 3 halves. The square root of 4, of course, is 2. So we get 5 times 2 cubed. That's going to give us 5 times 2 cubed is 8. And so 5 times 8 is 40. 40 is not bigger than 135. So we see that having number less than 11 didn't work. So you can use test points as well. If you don't like this graphical approach, whichever one you want, either one's going to work. Personally, I like graphing, but that's because I'm more I'm more familiar with the graphing. If you are very much a beginner, the graph might seem less than obvious. And so a test point might be a, a simpler way of approaching it here. So to solve this inequality, we're going to take 3 times x plus 1, raise it to the 2 thirds power minus 1, and set that equal to 107. Uh, now be aware that in the future, we're going to consider graphing the function 3 times x plus 1 to the 2 thirds minus 108. So you can always set this equation equal to zero, and that's the function you want to graph to see if you're above or below the x-axis. We're going to be looking for things that are going to be below the x-axis in just a little bit. But let's solve this equation here to find the marker. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, so we get 3 times x plus 1 to the 2 thirds. That's equal to 108. We're going to divide both sides by 3, so we get x plus 1 to the 2 thirds is equal to 108 divided by 3, which is equal to 36. 
And then taking the, so we divided both sides by three here. We added one both sides here. And this side, we're gonna take the three halves power. So this gives us x plus one, x plus one is equal to the square root of 36 to the cubed. Oh wait, we just square rooted both sides. We probably need to have two, two solutions, plus or minus one, there you go. Uh, the square root of 36 is going to be six. So then we have to cube six, which gives us 216 plus or minus. So we wanna think of in terms of our x-axis, we have these two markers, one at 216, and one at negative 216. So come back to the original graph, the original function right here. What is it that we're trying to do to this thing? Uh, the original function, because we're squaring it, even though there's a one third, it's gonna kind of look something like this. Is this a perfect picture? No, but this will be sufficient. Um, this graph, we're gonna vertically stretch it, okay? We shift it to the left by one, and then we're gonna shift it down by a negative, negative, we're gonna shift it down by 108. So something like this is gonna happen. Um, this is kind of like our, our beak versus the wings type portion right here. Um, there's the beak, which is going to be below the x-axis, and then there's going to be the wings that are above the x-axis. Because we're looking for things below the x-axis, I need to be selecting the beak on this bird right here. And actually, it occurs to me that I didn't actually finish solving this one thing, this thing right here. Two 16s aren't actually correct. Because what we saw here is that x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus 216. I need to still subtract 1 from both sides. So we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus 216, which tells us that we are going to get actually 215 or negative 217. In terms of the geometric analysis, that makes no bit of difference whatsoever, but it does have an effect on us. If we want the beak, we are going to grab the things between negative 217 and 215. And looking back at the original inequality, um, equality was not allowed there. So we're just going to get the points between, between uh, the markers there. That's just the beak of our bird. And so our solution would look like negative 217, 215. Which, if you don't feel comfortable with the graphing, like on the other example, you could plug in test values. Zero is a good number right here. Maybe something like 10 million. You know, it doesn't, it's just a big number. We have to get the... Uh, you can pick something smaller if you want, like three, negative 300. Just pick some points to plug in the function. That'll simplify very nicely. Uh, by all means, find things that are going to be perfect squares uh, for this situation, or perfect cubes. And this helps us solve. Th this demonstrates a technique how we can solve inequalities involving rational exponents. And this would work for power functions in general as well.